Sculpting and carving foam can be done with any number of hand tools. The best method involves cutting the largest amount of material away with more aggressive tools before moving in to create details with more refined tools. A handsaw is great for quickly cutting out a block of foam the size you need. If your piece is small enough to fit on a bandsaw, you can quickly shape it by drawing the outermost extents of the profiles on at least two sides. On this block I have drawn the top profile and one of the sides. Cut around the first outline, making sure to keep the off cut. You can tape the off cuts back on so that you can cut the second profile as easily as you cut the first. You can use a hot wire cutter for this step, as well as for some of the following steps. You need adequate ventilation if you are using a hot wire cutter. I don't have one in my shop though. For the next step, I'm using a knife with a snap-off blade. This allows me to have a long but thin blade to shave off large areas of foam. You want to do as much cutting as you can before you get into rasping and sanding, because rasping and sanding will raise dust and particles, which you want to avoid as much as possible. Calipers are a useful tool for checking the measurements of your sculpture. If it is a symmetrical piece, you can check if both sides are equal. You can also use it to check your sculpture against your reference image or piece. A sureform tool, short for surface forming tool, is like a mix between a rasp and a cheese grater. I really like the small handheld ones for sculpting foam after I finish cutting. You can quickly shave and shape your piece with one of these tools. Be sure to check your sculpture from all angles and views as you proceed. You can easily create a shape that looks good from one angle but looks flat and unrefined from other viewpoints. You are trying to make the curves as smooth as possible and to keep your sculpture from looking like it is a block of foam with slightly rounded edges. You can always switch back to your knife if you want to remove a large section quickly. When your shape is to your liking, you can sand it to remove the tool marks and smooth the surface. A lower grit can actually tear your foam, so I like to start around 120 grit and work my way up from there. You can use smaller scraps of sandpaper to further refine details as well. The amount of cleanup work you do with your sandpaper depends on what you're going to do to your foam piece next. A lot of coatings for foam need to go on thick to give it a hard shell, so you will be obscuring any fine detail, though you can carve the coating itself to add it back. In other words, you usually don't need to go too crazy with your detail on the foam itself. You just want the shape to be right. 